Hello and welcome to another video where today I'll be running through advanced variances as part of standard costing. And within this session, I'll be focusing specifically on variable overhead costs. Firstly, a quick reminder of what standard costing actually is. A standard cost for a product or service is a predetermined cost per unit set under specific working criteria. The idea behind using standard costing is that it gives the business greater control by being able to compare the actual cost of producing products to the standard cost. This also ties in with budgeting because by having a standard cost of producing one product, it easily allows the business to scale this up or down depending on how many units it plans to produce. This then has the potential to allow for budget managers to be assessed clearly between the actual and standard costs as part of a performance review. As you can probably guess from the above, standard costing is more suitable for a business that produces a high number of identical or at least very similar products or provide a standardized service than it would be where the product or service is tailored specifically to each customer. When a business calculates its variable overhead variances, it will split them into two separate variances, the variable overhead expenditure variance and the variable overhead efficiency variance. If we were to add the two together, it would equal the total variable overhead variance. Let's now take a look at each of these in more detail. We'll start off by looking at the variable overhead expenditure variance. And the question that's being asked when calculating the expenditure variance is, did the variable overhead cost more or less per hour than expected? If the cost per hour is less than what the business expected, then there will be a favorable overhead expenditure variance. And if it costs more per hour, then there will be an adverse expenditure variance. To calculate the expenditure variance, we need to multiply the actual hours used by the standard variable overhead rate. We then compare this figure to how much the business actually paid in variable overheads, with the difference between the two being our variable overhead expenditure variance. Let's put this into an example. In the table on screen now, we can see the budgeted and actual units produced, by the business along with the labor hours used and the variable overhead cost expected based upon those hours. To calculate the variable expenditure variance, we first need to calculate the standard cost per hour. To do this then, it would be the cost of 7,500 pounds divided by 3,750 hours to give us a cost per hour of two pounds. From here, we can multiply that standard cost per hour by the actual number of hours used of 4,240 to give us 8,480 pounds. This is the standard variable overhead cost for the labor hours worked. And we can now compare this figure and the actual variable overhead cost to give us our expenditure variance. This would therefore be 8,480 pounds less 8,200 pounds to give us a variance of 280 pounds. Now, as the business has spent less than expected, this would mean the variance is favorable. Now moving on to the variable overhead efficiency variance, which is measuring whether the business used more or less hours than expected to produce the number of units they did. Let's take a look at our previous example and calculate the variable overhead efficiency variance. We first need to determine the standard amount of time used to produce one unit. This will be calculated by dividing the budgeted hours used of 3,750 by the budgeted production units of 5,000. The standard time to produce a unit is therefore 0.75 of an hour, i.e. 45 minutes. We then apply this to the actual production. We actually produce 5,300 units, so if we multiply this by our expected hours per unit of 0.75, this gives us the amount of time in hours that should have been used, which in this case would therefore be 3,975. The next step is to compare this to the actual hours used of 4,240. And we can now calculate the difference between the two, which gives us 265 hours. 
The last step is to convert this to a monetary value. We do this by multiplying the 265 hours by the standard variable overhead cost per hour, which we calculated during the expenditure variance to be two pounds. This gives us a variable overhead efficiency variance of 530 pounds. And because we use more hours than expected for the number of units produced, this would mean that it's adverse. The variable overhead expenditure variance and variable overhead efficiency variance should add back together to come to the overall variable overhead variance, had we just flexed the cost from the budgeted amount to the actual amount. Our final check is to make sure the numbers reconcile. First, let's flex the variable overhead cost. This would be £7,500 divided by 5,000 units and then multiplied by the actual number of units produced of 5,300, which gives us 7,950 pounds. The actual cost of those units was 8,200 pounds, giving us a total variance of 250 pounds. And as we spent more than expected, this would be adverse. Let's now reconcile this with the expenditure and efficiency variances. The variable overhead expenditure variance was £280 favourable, plus the variable overhead efficiency variance, which was £530 adverse, gives us a total variable overhead variance of £250 adverse. So we can see from this that the figures reconcile. To finalise, we need to look at the possible causes of variable overhead variances. And again, these can be split between expenditure variances and efficiency variances, but do be aware that the two can often be linked. Some of the common reasons for expenditure variances are as follows. An increase or decrease in cost of services or an incorrect rate set when budgeting. Then some of the common reasons for efficiency variances could include higher or lower skilled staff, an increase or decrease in motivation, or again, an initial incorrect budget. And that wraps up this video on variable overhead variances. Hope you found it useful, and if so, hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.